break your phone. Go. Okay. Anyway. Right. <laughs> We're on. <laughs> I ran out. Happy yeah. Resurrection yeah. Sunday. And I took it back. Amen. So, we're going to talk about that this morning, and we're going to talk about the word Easter. We're going to talk about that too. Uh, what I first want to talk about is this quote that I received is on the news. I couldn't get the name. He's a former rabbi. He's a Messianic Jew, right? He believes Jesus is the Messiah. And he said, Adam and Eve took from the tree and led mankind to destruction. The father placed his son on the tree and led mankind to salvation. Mm. That was pretty good. Mm -hmm. I like that. Yeah. And so, um, there's another thing that he said. He said, um, in, in the curse, back in Genesis, Genesis 3, 18, <clears throat> when God pronounced the curse because of the sin, because of Adam and Eve taking from the tree, you know, he, he pronounced uh, the way it's going to be now, and then he said, <clears throat> Cursed is the ground because of you, and in pain you shall eat of it all the days of your life. Thorns and thistles it shall bring forth for you. And thorns, I have to think about it, thorns and thistles. Um, thorn, they're kind of annoying and they're painful, you know? Thorns and thistles. Um, they're, they're not deadly necessarily, but they're just painful. And uh, when we first moved into our place, um, I found this vine out in the back. And. Oh, wow. And it had these thorns on it. It had these thorns on it. And I said, I, that, that's very close to what they probably shaped into the crown of thorns. And so, just like in the beginning, they took from the tree, got it placed back on the tree. The sign of the curse of thorns. And they shaped the sign of a curse and put it on and put it on the king at his uh, crucifixion. <clears throat> so it's all connected, you know. The, the sign of the curse would be thorns and thistles. The sign of the curse he wore, he wore to the cross. He wore to be put back on the tree. So I thought that was very appropriate. Um, to go over this morning. <clears throat> and I just wanted to read uh, First Peter. We were, we were in First Peter recently. I wanted to read First Peter. <clears throat> Three eighteen. For Christ also suffered once for our sins, the righteous for the unrighteous, that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit. So, he, he was able to be placed on that tree for our sake, for through faith for us who believe in him. That he might bring us to God. But being made alive in the spirit. And that being made alive is what we celebrate today. Through the resurrection. And if I could shift gears a little bit, but on the same subject. Um... <clears throat> The word Easter. And yeah, my kids were reminding me of my pet peeves. I have a lot of pet peeves. <laughs> you know, does everybody have a pet peeve? No. Yeah. Yes. What's a pet peeve? What's one of your pet peeves? Crooked things. Really? <laughs> well, we Everybody's got to be straight. Yeah. Well, even if I put a level on it, yeah. if her eye says it ain't straight, it ain't it straight. Ain't straight. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, so pictures on the wall, they gotta be straight. Right? My pet peeve is do not put stuff in the dishwasher till like if there's food or anything on it, it needs to be restocked. I'm serious, that's so gross. Even though Pastor Aaron had a sermon, were you here when he had the sermon about? Oh, he said that. Yeah, yeah he, that's said, right. he said they're designed. They're designed to clean your dishes. I know. Whatever. I told the kids it's crazy. I know, <laughs> but. It's just gross. They're like, why even run the dishwasher? Dishwasher. <laughs> Do I have a cat pee? Just, just yeah, gotta have a clean dog. Rude? Well, I'm the same way. I'm sure I did, but I, yeah. I wasn't thinking of that. <laughs> All right. I'll call you when I think. Okay. Well, maybe, maybe I thought this to be your mind. Uh, uh, okay. So one of mine is unattended little children. Oh, that just. And it probably comes from me being one of the unattended little children. When I was a kid, I got hit by a car. I just can't stand seeing unattended little children. Ooh, it just gets me. Because something's going to happen. It's probably not going to be good. Uh, oh, my kids reminded me. Don't put the big, big items, the big boxes in the kitchen trash can. They just take up too much room. I can't stand <laughs> Don't put them in. Just take them out to the big trash can. And don't leave the tea bags in the jug. Oh, somebody else has a pet peeve. <laughs> don't leave the tea bags in the tea jug. Okay. How about this one? Um, oh. I could not stand to hear yeah or huh. Oh, from my kid. Huh? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, they know, yes, no. they know it's either yes, excuse me, yes ma'am, yes sir, whatever. But it's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. How about when you're in an HEV parking lot and people, <laughs> you're waiting for people to cross the street or the roadway, but they do it diagonally so that it takes oh, three times <laughs> as instead of just going across. <laughs> So another one was, um, oh, I, I can't stand wet socks. Oh, I can't stand wet socks. Just being in the Marines, wet socks. Oh, this white socks. Wet, 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 wet socks. It's just so annoying. And one other is, um, I had two others, but um, one other is the word luck. I, you'll never hear me use the word luck because it takes. God completely out of the picture, and you won't find it in Scripture. You can't find it in Scripture. What does it mean? What does it mean? You know, it means that chances. <laughs> it it means that God's not involved. It's, it seems like to me. So one of my other uh, recent pet peeves was using the word Easter because I associated with, uh, from what I've heard in history. I associated what others had associated with is the the pagan fertility gods, right? And so I said, you know what? I'm just going to do some research on this. I'm going to do some research and try to be objective. So I found some research and I wanted to share that with y'all this morning. Okay? So that's what uh, we're going to study about on Resurrection Sunday morning. <clears throat> The word in scripture in the New Testament is pasca. Okay? It's pasca. However you say this, uh, that's the uh, chi and the alpha. However you pronounce it, ka. Pasca. And 28 times it's used in the New Testament. Should write that up here? So it's used 28 times in the New Testament. 77 times um, overall. I can do the math there how many times I've used in the Old Testament. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> one time, one time it's used, and it's not translated Passover, and that's in Acts 12 4. And you can turn there if you want to. Acts 12 4. It's the same word, Pascha, in the Greek, 
But it's not translated Passover here. Somebody get there? Acts 12, 4. What's it translate? They held Peter, uh, King Herod held Peter in prison until the Pascha was over. Do you have that, Susan? Acts 12, 4. It doesn't say that in mine. What does it say? It says, and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four squads. Quarantineers? Of soldiers oh. to keep him intending after Easter to bring oh. him forth. Ah, to after the Pascha, <laughs> but here it's translated Easter. Easter. Mine is Passover. Okay, most English translations have Passover. King James and a few other have Easter. What do you have, Susan? I don't have my King James. Ah, okay. Yeah, I didn't have today. Yes, <laughs> and it says Passover, right? In NIV? I can try it. What was that? Um, Mine is King James. Yes, yes. So King James has Easter. So why this is one time that some of the translators say Easter. That's what we're gonna talk, that's what we're gonna find out. And is it okay? Is it okay that it says Easter? You know? Um so, some would say, well, it's King Herod, and Herod's kind of, he's kind of off track, and he may have been recognizing the pagan gods, you know, it could be. Um, I don't know. The, the setting seems to be um, Jewish, because it is King Herod, and could you read it again, please? Yeah. Uh, 12 4. So, it's King Herod, and he is supposed to be the king of the Jews, you know, he's, he's kind of supposed to be ruling over the Jews, so it kind of seems like a Jewish setting. And, and, what? and when he had apprehended him, he put him in prison and delivered him to four quarantinians of soldiers. Okay, so these soldiers are the Jewish guard, so that's Jewish. Okay, go ahead. To keep him, intending after Easter to bring him forth to the people. Okay, so <clears throat> I think I had a few more details. What else was it? Oh, does it say, to please, in, oh, maybe before uh, verse 12, it said, intending to please the, Jew, the Jews. Yes, in verse 3, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. It says, um, so <clears throat> let me just be begin from verse 1. About that time, Herod, the king, laid violent hands on some who belonged to the church. He killed James, the brother of John, with a sword. And when he saw that it pleased the Jews, he proceeded to arrest Peter also. So he's pleasing the Jews. So that's the context, part of the context, that he's pleasing the Jews by doing what? By laying violent hands on some who belong to the ecclesia, which is the church. Mm -hmm. um, so he's pleasing the Jews by persecuting the church. So some say, well, so see, the context seems Jewish, so why wouldn't they translate this word Passover? Or is the context Jewish? So let's think about this. Who's the author of Acts? Remember, we just um, talked about this somewhat recently. The author of Acts is the same author as the author of Luke. Yes, Luke wrote Acts, and Luke is the only Gentile author in all of the Bible. Right? Y'all remember that when we studied Acts and our Luke? So he's the only Gentile author in the Bible. So here's a Gentile, and he's writing to somewhat of a Gentile audience because the book of Acts talks about the works of the Holy Spirit throughout not just Judea, but really the, the rest of the known world at that time. And so he uses the word ecclesia, that's the name of our class, and the ecclesia means, y'all remember what that means? 
called out ones. Yes, the called ones. Called ones. Yes. Or the called out ones. Either one. And so the ones who are called. The word ecclesia in the Greek version of the Old Testament also stands for Church. the in the Old Testament also stands for the Jews, the called ones. The Jews were God's chosen, God's called people, right? And so it's also used as them. But that's not how it's translated here because we're in the New Testament now, right? And so is the context maybe of the church? We call it the ecclesia of the church. He doesn't, um, it's not translated the Jews because he's, King Herod is trying to please the Jews by persecuting the ecclesia at that time. So <clears throat> maybe a little clue there. Um, he's killing the Christians. He's arresting Peter, the leader of the Christians. And then it says, so Herod's waiting for the Pascha to bring him out to the people. Now, who would the people be? He, Herod's bringing, not, he's not bringing them out to the Christians because they're, I imagine they're kind of hiding at this point, you know? Or he's going to bring Peter out under arrest to who? It's, he's bringing them out basically on trial to present them to the Jews to say, hey, look what he's done. He's making a mockery of your religion. He's saying that this Jesus is the Messiah. We know he's not the Messiah. That's what King Herod would no doubt say. And so he kept him in prison until the Pascha was over. And of course, uh, King James and a few others interpret this as Easter. So what does Easter mean? Uh, we know what the Passover means. The Passover means what? And the Passover is Jewish. It means what? Angel death passed. Yeah, it's a celebration of the time when the death angel passed over those who would put the blood on the doorpost, right? In Egypt. And if the blood is covering the family, the death angel passed over. And then the next day, they, they were allowed to leave <clears throat> um, to escape that um, imprisonment or bondage. So <clears throat> that's a very Jewish context, right? Um, so where does Easter, how did Easter maybe get justified to put in here? So <clears throat> the etymology, in other words, the where does the word come from? Of the word Easter. Um, some are related to the uh, fertility god Astarte or Ishtar, right? Ishtar and Easter, they kind of sound close, right? And some would say, well, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the association. But, um, let's go green here. <clears throat> um, Ishtar and Astarte, that's where the fertility comes in. Um, there's an association with flocks, um, fertility of the flocks. And so that's where that comes from. But that's really not the etymology of Easter. In fact, the beginning etymology of Easter begins with this. East, okay? And <clears throat> it comes from the Saxon root, which stands for East. Saxon being German, Old German. And that's Ost. Mm -hmm. Okay? So, at Ostern literally means from the east. And that was closely associated with uh, the dawn. 
because the sun comes up in the east or rising or sunrise or morning okay so morning sunrise so <clears throat> the if you follow the etymology it's more closely related to the east the the literal direction of east where the sun rises, the dawning, or the morning. And so, um, some would say, well, that's very closely associated with what happened on resurrection morning, right? Mm -hmm. The dawning, the sun, the sunrise, and we can even say uh, the S-O-N, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. The sun rose. So, <clears throat> It's interesting that um, a Gentile author, he used the same word, pasca, but it, it wasn't necessarily him, but it was the uh, interpreters that inserted Easter here in Acts. So it just, uh, it was, it's always been a curiosity of mine. Now, as for me, I don't know about my house, but as for me, I'm still going to say Resurrection Sunday, okay? And some would say, uh, kind of being petty there, you know, it's okay to say Easter. Um, and part of this article says, um, the Christian who feels a little weird about saying Easter shouldn't, uh, shouldn't uh, feel like the pagans have... Uh, have, have a monopoly on this word, go ahead and, if there's nothing wrong with recognizing the sun rose, uh, the east, the dawning of that day, you know, and we can have this word in our vocabulary just as well as they can have it in their vocabulary. Um, any comments on that? I think it comes just, you know, to trying to please every, like, you know. So, okay, I want to be too forward about my belief. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of room for you to kind of like, you know, like, I want you to grasp it, but not fully, I don't know, it's kind of confusing. Right. Like, so, grasp it, why don't we, you know, be I guess, so straightforward. I don't have to force it on you. No, you cannot say Easter in a Christian setting. It has to be Resurrection Sunday. It has to be Resurrection Morning or Happy Resurrection Day. It's okay it's to under, if you understand that this isn't only about the fertility gods. This is about a sunrise. This is about a dawning. And it really is a dawning of a new day where Christ Proclaimed victory over death, right? Proclaimed <laughs> victory over um, sin and the consequences of sin, right? The wages of sin and what? Death. Yeah. But the free gift of God is eternal life, eternal life mm -hmm. through Christ Jesus. Mm -hmm. Y'all know where that is? In the Bible. Nah. <laughs> That's her. That's always her answer. <laughs> It's correct. That's it's correct. correct. <laughs> She's never wrong. I can't remember that, right? <laughs> uh, how about Romans 3? 23. No, okay. How about Romans 6, 23? I know it's one of those 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. So, it's, it's just, it was interesting to me that, you know, the one time you read it in Scripture is Easter. Is it okay to say Easter? And so I found this article. I just want to share it with you. Uh, also, a favorite Easter morning or resurrection morning memory. From anybody. Favorite. Yeah. Favorite. 
I have one. <clears throat> Anybody have a, a memory of? Uh, I got two bad memories. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Let's go with a good memory. <laughs> All I remember is this yellow suit, right? I think I was about this height. Oh. And my mom, wherever she found a yellow suit, <laughs> it, it was a, a regular suit with a co coat and tie, and it was yellow. How and I'm fun. thinking, For yeah, why do I have to wear this yellow suit? <laughs> so maybe that is a bad How memory. Uh, this old Howard, you need a four that. years old. I have old. a bad memory too. And why are they all bad memories? Bad memories. <laughs> well, I was probably like seven, oh and Lord. we were at my grandma's, and they lived in the country, and I was all dressed in my Easter dress and stuff, and we were hunting eggs, and somehow I ran off and got into the, like their sewer line thing, oh. and got covered in the no. sewer. Oh. Yes. In your Easter dress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You should hear, I got good memories, are bad, but funny from my grandparents. One time I went running to the pig so. farm, and ran in, and they had washed it and spilled. Oh. So, so speaking of which, where did the, so how did the Easter eggs and the bunnies and all that, how did that get combined into the church setting? Because you know? <clears throat> I remember wearing that suit, and right after church, we had the Easter egg hunt. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. how, how did those two get associated? Do you know? No, I'm I think asking the a question. Reason, the egg, mm -hmm. I think, was a symbol, a written, for Christians, was a symbol of the tomb, the empty tomb. Okay, okay. Egg. Or life. Maybe both. The, mm -hmm. the bunnies and their fertility. The, chicken, and... the little baby chicks coming out of the egg. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Well, I did just read on Facebook where someone wrote, every time you take a piece of candy out of the plastic egg, remember the tomb is empty. Okay. That's good. Yeah. But where it all got started, I don't know. Yeah, and well, I think it's this association exactly. with this fertility, fertility and right. Eshtar sounds close to Easter, mm -hmm. and you know, mm -hmm. anybody else with an Easter memory or? A... You know, I'm from South America. We okay. don't have any of egg hunt or any really? of that. Okay. okay. So it's just very. Um, I was talking to myself. You know, we really kind of mourn on Friday. You know, nobody works. So it's it's more focused on yes. the crucifixion you know, and resurrection. The majority of us you know, used to be Catholic, right? So mm -hmm. you know, Sunday you just watch movies all day long about mm -hmm. the, really? the crucifixion. And huh. you cry, and you feel bad, mm -hmm. <laughs> for real. <laughs> and then on Saturday, you know, you feel a little better, you know. And on Sunday, of course, you are super excited. You dress up, but there's there's no a hand. I never knew about that until I came here. Is there like a celebration meal at least on Sunday? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. You have family over, and, you mm -hmm. just... and what was a traditional meal? Was of it... course, you know we don't eat meat. Oh, okay, okay. And it's just fish or uh, okay you know, something related, you know, seafood. I think fish. the traditional meal here would be ham, right? Mm -hmm. Easter ham, I guess. Oh, okay. And yeah. you know, it has nothing to do with Jewish because the, the Jews would not have a ham, <laughs> um, but. Um, we were invited, this is a good memory, we were invited over to the, um, <clears throat> the Wayne and Vanessa, Vanessa, not Vanessa, Shirley. Shirley, we knew another Wayne and Vanessa, <laughs> Wayne and Shirley, Kathy, and they, they, she prepared a, a Passover meal for us, including lamb, yeah, and it included the Seder, which is the beginning part of that the traditional Passover where they, they dip the uh, parsley into the salt water and they included mm -hmm. horseradish and whew, I'm not a horseradish fan, <laughs> but that will sure clear your sinuses. <laughs> <laughs> and so, and, and the, um, the, um, the matzah, which is free of leaven, leaven yeast. 
And so we didn't hide the, the one matzah. We didn't, it wasn't completely Jewish, but they just wanted to include what the Jewish tradition was as far as going over what all these elements meant. And so that was pretty special, and we appreciated that. Well, the matzah bread had holes and stripes yes. on it. I remember him asking the kids there, why does the cracker have holes and stripes? Mm -hmm. And, and even the Jews, the Orthodox Jews, they don't know why it had holes and stripes, but it represents Christ who had holes mm -hmm. and stripes. Oh, that's good. No, I didn't know that. Right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, and he was without sin. The matzah was, is without yeast, which in the scriptures represents sin. So. I love that. Maybe yeah. y'all can do that at your house someday. Okay, and have everybody over? Yeah. <laughs> Shirley with me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Come over to the house, Shirley. But uh, she did a great job on that lamb. Oh, it was yeah. good. It, there's a, a lot of preparation you have to do to get the wild Maybe. taste. Get the wild taste out. Yeah. Mm. So that's good. Anybody yeah. else? Any other mm -hmm. Easter or Resurrection Sunday memories? Y'all should have a bunch. Why? Yeah. Just because we're old? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a memory. <laughs> it would help if you had a memory, right? <laughs> let's, uh, let's end in a word of prayer. Father, we're so thankful that uh, this morning is one to celebrate. One to celebrate um, the life, the victory over death through the resurrection through your servants coming to the tomb and I don't know that they knew what to expect. They sh surely didn't expect an empty tomb. Mm -hmm. and we praise you, thank you for that, the ability for us to enjoy that same eternal life. And Lord, thank you for the, the fulfillment of the promise, the fulfillment of sending your Holy Spirit to dwell within us, just as you said on that night. And Lord, it allows us to be different, different than what the world expects. They expect to run to us and to see something that's just like them, but through you, we are not. We praise you for that. I just ask that we would uh, leave this place kind of renewed and um, reminded of the power you possess and the power that uh, we possess through you. We give you the glory.